the EVA-1 has a lot of built-in focusing assist and a lot of them can be used combined. So I'm gonna show you the ways that you can get focus assist and then what I recommend is the best way to make sure you have guaranteed great focus. Now the first and most obvious way of getting focus assist is the expanded focus assist. Magnifies up the image, you can really see exactly what you're getting there and you can even move the expanded window around the screen to look at different quadrants, or actually I believe it's the nine sections of the screen, and you can magnify even further. So you can get down to true pixel level and get picture perfect focus. That's a great way to go. Another way to go is the open iris focus assist. Now the open iris focus assist requires you to be using an automatic lens that has automatic iris control. But if you do, when you hit open iris focus assist, it will open the camera's iris all the way to maximum, so that makes the depth of field the shallowest. When the depth of field is really shallow, really, really narrow, then it's very easy to tell when something is sharply in focus or out of focus. So it opens up the iris, and then it compensates by cranking up the shutter speed so that it makes the exposure look like what your shooting exposure will be but it makes the depth of field narrower, so now you can get pinpoint focus. And you can combine that with the expanded focus. So now you can get super sharp, really pinpoint focus. Very easy to do. The only real drawback would come when you're trying to use the open iris focus assist during a recording. It won't even work, and you really wouldn't want it to either. I mean, imagine you're in the middle of a shot and all of a sudden the iris pops wide open and then the shutter speed adjusts. You don't want that happening during your shot. So there are some focus assist that we can use that are also available during recording. We have conventional focus peaking where it outlines the image in a color and only the items that are in focus will be outlined and other items won't. And so this is a really great way, a very common way, especially a run and gun kind of a way to nail focus. When you see that color show up on maybe the, the pupils of your subject's eyes or maybe on their eyelashes and you know you've got great focus there. Another take on peaking, an entirely different way of looking at it, is called the focus squares. And this is something that was first made available on the Vericam and they brought it down to the EVA 1 level now. And it's a fantastic focus assist. Really simple, looks weird when you first see it, but it's very easy to get the hang of, which is that whatever's in focus to any degree will have a green square put on it. The sharper it's in focus, the bigger the square will be. Very simple game, and you just make the squares biggest where you want focus to be. And if there's little squares, you'll know that they're a little blurry. And if there's no squares, you know that they're not in focus at all. So you can choose peaking or squares, or actually you can set up to have both, but not at the same time. It's one press of the button would bring up peaking and the next press of the button would bring up squares. So that can be used during recording. And another way to help focus this, you can actually turn the screen black and white. Some people find it easier to focus on a black and white image yeah, to me, not nearly enough. But what's genius is you can have the camera turn it to black and white only when you're using focus peaking. So now the whole screen is black and white. The only color on there is that sharp red or, or whatever color you've chosen to be your focus peaking color. That makes it very, very simple to see when the peaking is working. Or you can also use it for the focus squares. These are four different ways that can use get focus. There's actually a fifth way too. If you have an automatic controlled lens with automatic focus, you can tell the camera to take a one push autofocus. There's no continuous autofocusing on the EVA one. It just doesn't have that capability, but it can grab a focus. So you can point the camera at your subject, press the one push autofocus button, and it will and lock in on focus for you. And it, obviously it's gonna be doing it at an incredibly high precision pixel level not that easy to make out focus on a four inch LCD. You know, there's limitations, but the camera can see and, and grab a great focus for you. You just wanna make sure to double check it with your peaking, with your squares, with your expanded focus assist. Now, most of these focus assists are controlled by configuring them to a user button on the camera. The camera has nine user buttons. You can put a lot of different functions on there. You can use up even two or three of them with focus assist if you wanted to. But you can also, instead, you can go into the output settings menu under LCD focus assist, and here's where you can configure exactly which focus assist you want to have active, and if you want the focus assist to time out after a while, like the open iris focus assist, it can keep that iris open for 10 seconds or 30 seconds, or when you press the button, same thing with the expanded focus assist. So there's a lot of control over how those focus assists work here in the menus. Now, 
you know how to focus. I hope that's been helpful and stay tuned to the rest of the videos in this series for even more tips and tricks on how to use your Evo One. Panasonic.